All right, yo, what up? This your boy T Dub was blazing the sports guys. We are here live. All right, so as we have a triple hitter today, guys, one of the fight just finished. The return of Kale Brook. Guys, no, he didn't return at 147. He made his debut at 154. We're going to get into it, how he looked, how it ended. And, guys, I would like to say this. Uh, we didn't get as many rounds to see how well he would adjust. But I tell you one thing, the guy looked pretty nice in the rounds we got. So let's get into it. The first round, I'm looking to see how Kale Brook's going to come out. One. Is he going to show ring rust? Two, how would his speed be? Three, one of the biggest things, how would his power transition to a higher weight than 147 to 154? We saw him at 160. Yes, he landed a couple nice punches on Triple G, but he didn't really seem to hurt Triple G at all. In his last fight at 147 against Earl Spence Jr., he done very well for the first half of the fight, but he didn't hurt Earl Spence Jr. But now we get a chance to see Carol Brook back as they still playing his music dun, 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 in the background. Guys, first round he came out, looks like a pretty good fill out round. Nobody looked at, you know, uh, there was nothing spectacular. Just a normal fill out round. I didn't see any ring rush in the first round, but what I did saw him is already to adapt. You saw his ring IQ, you saw him being able to adjust and see shots early. Because even in the first round, one of the money shots that he landed was an uppercut. Kell Brook hit him with a nice uppercut in the second round. Let me turn this down just a bit. And uh, Kell Brook hit him with a nice uppercut in, in the first round, and he boxed very well. well. I would probably tip the first round to Kell Brook, but the second round, guys, um, Kell Brook was landing some nice shots. That jab was looking really nice. That right, his combination, the one he did throw, he threw a nice little hook into a right hand. But the one money shot that you can tell he found that was landing over and over in the two rounds that it actually went, was not even quite two rounds, was the uppercut. That was his money shot, but not the shot at the end of the fight. The shot at the end of the fight with Kell Brook was a right hand. Guys, so let's break it down. What happened? All right. So, Kill Brook had just threw a combination prior. It could have been either a, a hook two or a two hook. And he followed by throwing a jab and that uppercut that he loved. And I believe he ended up coming with another jab in a right hand. And that right hand hit Rob Chico square in his face, guys. And he had like maybe a half a second delay before he went down. Kill Brook stopped. Sergey Robchenko in the second round. You know what? For him to come back in 154, being in his, you know, his hometown with all the fans. And, and guys, once again, I take my hat off to uh, the UK fans. The UK fans, their loyalty, their, their support for their fighters, their athletes. I mean, like I said, um, I, I wish that the, the overall fans in the U.S. was like that. Unfortunately, right now it's not. Maybe one day it will. But guys. Congratulations to Kell Brook. Guys, came back from two broken eyes. He went up to 160 and got one eye shattered. Came back to 147 and got the other eye shattered. So people are thinking that, okay, it was very hard for him to make 147 pounds, right? Coming off of two losses, has to have surgery, has to take a mandatory break. And he comes back, not at 147, but he comes back at 154, guys. And I predicted that he was going to beat Rabchenko. Um, thank you, Kell Brook. I predicted a knockout by the fifth round. Two rounds is still good. So, Kell Brook, the special K, you're definitely good in my book right now. Thank you. 50 bucks is now in my pocket. So, he came back, guys. Um, and he looked at pretty, you know, I, I would say... From two rounds, you can't get a whole gist of how he looked overall, like, you know, for that you can get in six, five, or six, seven rounds. But I can tell you this right now, he adapted well. Um, his power was still there. His counterpunching was still there. We didn't get a chance to see how his legs would have held up doing a different round with the higher weight class. But either way, this is a great introduction. There's no better introduction to a new weight class. Congratulations to Kill Book, the special cake. But, guys, now... Where does Kell Brook go from here? You know Charlo, Jamel Charlo called him out and said, hey, if he was talking to Eddie Hearn, hey, if he knocks him out, 
within six rounds. He the he's a candidate for my June date. And for Carol Brook post fight interview on this fight, looks like Eddie Hearn said that Carol Brook is going to return in June. So that is a fight that's going to be that can be made, but I do not believe it's going to be made because they set up a bigger fight after that. Uh, Amir Khan is fighting April the 21st. And Killbrook is, is, is wanting to fight again in June. And after both of them guys hopefully win their fights, they set up a mega fight in the back end of this year. They asked Kell Brook in a post-fight interview, um, what if Amir Khan wants to fight at 147? Kell Brook, not Kell Brook, but... Uh, yeah, Kell Brook was pretty much like, listen, it doesn't even matter the weight class. This fight has to be made. We've been trying to make this fight for the last three or four years. We have to get this done. Kell Brook seemed to be on track of getting this fight with Amir Khan. Now that uh, Amir Khan has actually... Oh, will you stop there? Oh, Sorry, guys. I got a... Uh, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at a little party. We got some kids here. And you know, these kids have had a lot of sugar. Somebody should not give these guys sugar. But uh, let's get into it, guys. So it looks like they set up a super fight between Amir Khan and Carol Brook the back end of this year. Carol Brook looked pretty nice in this fight. For Jamel Charlo, I don't think that is a good fight for Carol Brook for his very next fight. Even though Carol Brook knocked out Sergey Rabchenko, I still think he has to have at least another fight before stepping in there with the guys like Jamel Charlo or Hurd or any of those big punchers or even a skilled fighter like Laura. But guys, very good introduction. Not a lot to say about this fight because Carol Brook, the man that you see right there into the other man on the other side of him by knockout. Sweet combination, sweet punch. The right hand landed flush. And the thing about the right hand, Rap Chico was getting ready to throw his own right hand, but Carol Brooks was a little bit faster and landed and connected. And guys, as you've seen from, you know what, I can show you right here. In case you're not looking at the thumbnail, what I'm going to do, guys, is change out this picture so you can kind of see the finishing results of how Carol Brook left his opponent. And there you are. Carol Brook, you see it right there, guys. He hit him with a right hand. He beat Rap Chinko as he was trying to retire. Rob Chinko was trying to counter, and he got hit. That's the one thing about with counter punches, guys. You got to be careful when you counter punch him because sometimes if a guy is throwing more than one or two or three shots, it's really hard to get a counter punch in there. You can find yourself getting hit in your face, in your mouth. And with Carol Brook, even though a lot wasn't done the first round, you can tell Rob Chico's face, I'm not no lie, guys, his whole body was pale, but his face was already showing the signs a red and somewhat a purposeness. Guys, we got people in the audience. He said the problem with Joshua Wilder, Joshua versus Wilder, there are good fights going down in the UK regularly, so no one is um, vacuum thinking about Wilder fight. He is either does a deal with Parker or there is no fight. Um, I would love to see the fight next between Wilder and Joshua. I think it is a really good setup right now. I think if Wilder beat uh, Luis Ortiz, who is a pretty high-ranked undefeated champion, I think, honestly, Luis Ortiz is probably the best fighter that Wilder can fight right now besides having to fight down. And if Joshua goes out there and beat Parker, who I think is actually a pretty good fighter, I think Parker um, can give Anthony Joshua a pretty good fight. Um, I think he can give him a really good fight, but I still pick Anthony Joshua to beat Parker. As of now, guys, I haven't got deep into that. But um, it would be nice if them two can beat those people and then have a mega fight. Unfortunately, uh, Anthony Joshua has a lot more options. Um, they can make the Tyson Fury fight if he some happens to return. Um, it just, so, you know, maybe even fight the winner out of, uh, of what I'm thinking about. Uh, uh, Tony Bellew and uh, David Hay. It's just so many more options over there for him, or even a guy from uh, from the States, uh, Big Baby Miller. Anthony Joshua just has a lot more options not to make it happen. But the thing is, guys, if one of these guys take a loss, that mega fight is gone. Anybody that Anthony Joshua fights outside of being Wilder, it's not going to be looked at as the heavyweight fight in the division. The heavyweight to fight in the division, if both of these guys, Anthony Josh and Deontay Wilder, stay undefeated and them guys fight each other and not five years down the line, but preferably, if not the end of this year, 
maybe we got to get this fight next year. We cannot push it out no further. Guys, let me know what you think about Kell Brooks' return. How they look in the first round? How they look in the second round? Do you think he is ready and made for 154 pounds? I can say this, he didn't look too bad. He didn't look too small. He didn't look too big. It didn't, you know, we didn't see enough round to see if he's going to fatigue or not. But I can tell you right now that the guy is a good boxer. Bob was over there telling me that he looks up to Carol Brook because this guy has a lot of heart. And there's some guys, some fighters that don't have their heart. They quit when you know they couldn't continue. Even though uh, Carol Brook last two fights, they was stoppages because he had his eye broken. You know, that was that is different. You've seen fighters that just get dropped. They're fully conscious on what's going on, and they quit. Carol Brook is a pretty good fighter. He is going to go out fighting. I look forward to see what he does next, who he fights next. I don't think it's going to be a big fight at 154, but it will be a fight and probably back in his hometown. Amir Khan is going to, is going to have a fight April 21st. Hopefully, Amir Khan come back and look like new money. Amir Khan problems is his chin. Guys, fighter is treating his chin like it's glass, and they and their hands are made with hammers. They're trying to crack it every chance they get. But Amir Khan, guys, believe it or not, is a, this guy has super speed. He's a really good boxer, moves around the ring. He has a lot of, there's not a lot of bad things about Amir Khan, but it, it, I hate to say it, his chin is his kryptonite. He is Superman, and his kryptonite is his chin. But guys, we are going to go live out the, the Deontay Wilder. This right here is for Carol Brook right here. But as you can see, I'm still kind of set up for the Deontay Wilder fight from having them right below here because I am going live after that. Give you guys a blow by blow. Uh, if you want to hear me call the fight live, I can't. If not, guys, um, I would just do a post-fight interview. Like As soon as the fight over, I'm going to go live as before the interview phase so we can listen to the, the post-fight interview together, break it down, go from there. It's your boy T-Dub, What's Plays in the Sports. We are here live. Thank everybody for watching. Thank you uh, to all my UK fans. I know I'm slowly getting a few UK fans. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh, and all my U.S. fans, trust me, this, this is my home. Thank you, guys, as well. Anybody out there on West Plays and Land, we are here. We are here to stay and put our mark on the sport of boxing. We're out.